Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JTO Sullivan. You asked for it. You got it. Geno Smith, nice win versus the Browns. Fired up for this one. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> Before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of this channel. Not only is it a great, cheap way to support the channel, but you get even more Quarterback School content. So if you enjoy the way that I talk and teach ball, you will love the Quarterback School Patreon community. Hop over there, join, become a member, get even more Quarterback School content. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get into it. Geno Smith, y'all asked for it. Y'all got it. Nice win versus a really good Cleveland Browns defense right here. Third and four, Gino on this little short post or slant to lock it. Nice conversion, just a little bit off as far as accuracy. If it was right on him, a little bit right in front of him, more precise. I feel like this thing would be an even bigger hit. So what we're looking at here up top is we're going to let this thing go and go kind of up and then boom in and use this thing as essentially a clear here. So when we come in here, get behind it, set it up, and then this really nice window to be able to come up put it right here now the thing quarterback wise for me and because we're not in the quarterback room we don't know but it sure looks like Gino is looking this way now is he looking this way to hold defenders to hold this window or is he actually reading something down here and then comes to the backside you know it's one of those things where I think if you could get your feet over there a little earlier it would make this throw a lot better a lot cleaner you know to me he's just holding that weak side linebacker Look off, boom. And just again, just that slight accuracy letting him down. It's still a nice conversion. It's still a big time conversion. You can see him hold five. That linebacker in the B gap on the left side, right over the left guard, hold him to the right, snap it back. I'm all for that head and shoulder right there to look. But at the top of the drop, instead of being lined up right down the hash, have your feet lined up where you want it to go so you don't have to get there like that. Now we're leaning left, we're going left, the ball is behind him, and it's a nice catch as opposed to a bigger chunk. Next one here, play action shot. We're trying to get the ball to Metcalf 14, the number one up top on a deep out. It's not there. Gino's got to buy a little bit of time, stay on the move, off platform, find Lockett in the middle of the field. Now, I love Gino's ability here to be able to extend a little bit. It's not there. This is really a one check down go type situation. Gino makes that thing look easy. Love his ability when he has to, to be able to move and create a little bit, probably more than I probably normally assume with him. We're trying to get the ball right here, deep, deep out on a play action. All right. Flat defender just gets out underneath it, and then they match to the check down. So whoever shows up here in the flat gets matched to by one of these inside backers. Now, the part of this play that's interesting here is lock it. If he's running this over post, whatever you want to call it, if he just keeps running, this thing's probably a massive hit. He kind of, for, for my money, settles here. It's still a nice hit, and he's able to bind him, but that's because Gino is extending this thing, right? Like he stops at the top of this thing, comes out, play action, turns around. Over here, one, no. Two, check down, no. Well, now we got to go move. So as he moves, we kind of uncover together. But if he were to see that thing and just keep running, you know, the football kind of just play, feel, grass element of me once that post or over to just keep running. Look at it open down here. Again, look at that free safety. Spins like a top. Whoop. Nice job regardless. Off platform, create, extend. Love the, that characteristic in any quarterback. And I think for Gino right here, if he can continue to do this element of it, we know he can throw it down the field. We know he can drive it. But this little creative element, again, that's a really nice play. Up and over five. Nice weighted ball right up on his grill. Hell yes. Nice play. Next one here. Third and 12 touchdown pass. Same type of play as far as the creative element. Whatever it's supposed to be is not there. He's got to go. Out the grass. Spin. Hurdle. In shows the touch. The easy flick. The arm talent. Outstanding from Geno Smith right here. So we'll talk about what the concept is. Doesn't panic. Eventually has to get out of there. Little agile move. Jump over. But then the touch. Ooh. Look at this throw, y'all. He makes this throw look easy. That throw is not easy. He's got to put it over zero, back corner, 
Look at Metcalf. He knows it's a touchdown. Arm up. Dot. That's a dot. That's a hell of a play. Now, what this play is, I can't really tell you. That's probably not a great sign. It looks like if we just had to come up here, and I'm going to call that a post, really crummy drawing post, up, post there, a little bit better. The number two looks like he's on a post. The one I don't know about is right here, lock it. Whatever this is supposed to be, you know, if this is supposed to be a wheel, whatever, he kind of gets like spun and grabbed and kind of in that post lane. So if we were just reading this thing out and it was double post, you know, that high back five on that post of 14 is probably where it wants to go. But it really doesn't matter where it's supposed to go because this play is so good because Gino creates out of structure. Again, would you throw that post up top to 14? Right there, you know, I would. I don't love whatever that route is as he's so like choppy at the top. Like, ah, 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 just run, dog. But man, this throw, that touch, <laughs> silky. That is awesome. And again, maybe it's my own issue just not thinking of Gino as this type of guy. I think of him as more of a traditional pocket, like, certainly got the arm talent, can spin it. But this ability right here, out of structure again with the touch. Hell of a play. Next one here, first and five. Great opportunity for a shot. We're going to hit Metcalf, the new number one up top, on a best release inside go. Beautiful touch. You know, the ball fades a little bit on him as opposed to like right down the line, but still, this is an outstanding throw. Nothing easy about this footwork either as far as turning like that, reverse out, hit your back foot, give your guy a shot. Beautiful adjustment. I mean, that is a hell of a throw. This is a really difficult throw with what they're asking him to do here at the snap where you essentially are like wrong turning, reverse out, hit your back foot. You know, I think it could be easier if he doesn't hit his back foot and go backwards, but it really doesn't matter because when you've got this kind of arm talent and then you're going to best release. So best release means you can go inside or you can go outside. Now, right here, he goes inside. And then he's able to get back out and stem it. And again, the ball for me just fades just a tick. And the only it's still a big play. It's still a beautiful throw. But a perfect throw, you know, right down the stem allows you to a better opportunity for this thing to score, right? So it's just the, that idea of being how can we best get these huge home run shots at max effort to be touchdowns? Yeah, it's a beautiful throw. It really is. Reverse out. Again, you can see that little hitch back. Ooh, right there. Big time throw. Look at that, man. Beautiful. I'm not sure what the free safety is doing here. Watch the free safety turn the wrong way. That's not the technique we're looking for. Nice throw. Big time hookup. Big play. Love it. Again, watch this footwork or the drop, really. See how he kind of opens to his left? You know, trying to think, oh, we're going to give him that fly sweep right there. Whoop. Nope. We're into it. If it wasn't there, so say you didn't like that go ball or go route from Metcalf, you can see Lockett working the over. Okay, multiple runaways versus this man coverage. Look at Lockett's stem, too. It's a thing of beauty. Watch him stair-step him up, separate. Ooh. It's a dot, though. Well done. Big play. Next one here. Really nice job from Geno Smith. I love this high-level quarterbacking. We're going to change the declaration. So he sees the pressure coming from his right, but it's only five-person protection. So we redeclare it. We're still hot off the nickel up top. We throw the hot to the vertical number three. Hell yes. This is a clinic rep for quarterbacking. Watch him redeclare the mic. So five, the line is going to five, but we're still hot. Get the ball out. Doesn't take a hit. Nice little chunk. That is how you get teams to stop blitzing you. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about right there. You can see him redeclare the mic. So what that means, I know a really good video on this, is that the offensive line is going to these four in this player well we only have five offensive linemen okay this the back right here is out on whatever that motion is so when they bring inevitably six with this player nickel off the edge we have to throw a vertical hot boom right there and that's exactly what he does so he redeclares boom that puts them on these five they bring a six defender off the edge. Gino's got an answer. That answer is a vertical hot to the number three. I love it. This is playing quarterback. This is pro quarterback. Well done, Gino. Love this kind of communication, the detail, the answers, the toolkit, the base. Check out his base. 
Any heel click, boom, no, back foot, ball right on him. Hell yes. It's just clean, well-coached, well-executed, high-level Sunday football. Thank you. Boom, free runner, doesn't matter, completion, let's go. Next one here. Now, this is when things start to go a little sideways for us. We're going to try to throw a speed out down here to the bottom to the number 114. We throw a sinker. Now, I haven't talked a lot about 95 yet for the Browns, but he is a game wrecker, a game wrecker. I personally think he impacts this throw getting down at Geno's feet. Again, this is not an easy throw. I know in the league people make this thing look easy. This, to me, is a speed out, usually thrown in gun with three no hitch. So this idea being we're going to take three. I prefer to dovetail. Okay, what a dovetail means is that as you drop, you're turning a little bit so that when you go to throw this, you're already lined up to your target and you're in the middle of the pocket. A lot of guys back in the day would kick step this thing and throw like over the left guard. All bad. Right here, we can see 95 right here. He is getting off this thing. Tight turning this thing and right at our feet playing quarterback. Not easy to throw an out to that side when this happens. Now, in hindsight, you'd love the back to chip. And that's not what happens here. They didn't ask us about the pass pro. But you can see here how 95 definitely impacts this. You see how he's right at the feet where Gina has to kind of like jump back? To me, that's impacting his front foot. He gets all his cleats in the ground, you know, and you just come out there and throw a sinker. That's what game wreckers do. They wreck the game even if they're not hitting the quarterback, even if they're not sacking the quarterback. That is impacting the game. <laughs> How about that step he makes right here? Holy moly. Boom, boom. Oh, sinker. Next one here, fourth and two. This is actually one of my favorite throws from Geno Smith in this game. Fourth and two, big conversion coming back across the field, really hitting the number four. I love the design of this play. I like the execution. Gino does a great job here, buying enough time. Retreat, retreat, retreat. Fourth down, make that kind of throw. Let's go. So the ball's supposed to go to the back, and the back is really 16. So it's one of those things where you try to hide your guy in the backfield. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't right here. The intent of this play, in my opinion, is this sneak flat, and then we're going to chip 95 and really come across here. Let me better explain that. The intent of the play is this sneak flat. You're essentially getting three picks here. So you're going to get this, this, and this. That's the three picks for the flat. You are also going to get the number two here, chipping and coming across as the number two. So once this sneak flat happens, it's essentially a glorified, really big railroad play where you're going to get mesh. Okay, so this mesh is going to turn into the hook right there. True mesh where he can settle up versus zone, and then we're going to keep running across on the first mesher. So this play, the read here, if I had to bet a lot of money, it would be one here, two right there to the check flat, three to the deep hook, and then four to the settle up mesh. And so Gino's able to buy enough time here, retreat, 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 and find number four. Really nice job going right to left, full field read here. There's a lot of moving parts. Let's watch all the picks up top. So see how they all come in and try to bluff? That 22 does a great job sorting it out and outflanking 16 into the sneak flat. From there, the bottom tight end, we're going to chip 95, game wrecker, and we're going to get into the shallow. Not there. Deep hook, not there. 14, yes, on the settle up mesh. Well done. I'll let it play one more time just because there's so many elements to this play. I really love this play. Flat, no. Check shallow, no. Mesh. Yes, all while we are retreating and getting smacked in the face here. Watch Gino here. Bail, bail, bail. Right guard takes an L. Bail, bail, bail. Boom. Hit, ground, first down. Let's go. Next one here. Rough INT to the bottom. Speed out. If you thought skipping a speed out in a two-minute drive was rough, how about a interception in field goal range? Damn. That is rough. Gino here, you know, to me... It's not necessarily a, a terrible throw. You know, it's one of those things that's for me is hard to make sense of because if you're asking the quarterback to throw what I'm going to call this speed out down here again, now you might say, hey, the call, bro, second time in the same series, not great, Bob. 
but you're throwing this with anticipation. He's off right here. He just makes a hell of a play and undercuts this thing. You know, maybe the ball is a tick inside, like not way out in front. Like if you're going to miss it, you want to miss this thing way out in front. But I mean, this is one of those things where like you almost can't call this if the guy has the capacity to make this kind of play. You know, that's a, that is a hell of a drive coming out of your pedal right there. That is some great cornerback corner play. Look at the anticipation because he throws it right there. I mean, I don't think it's a terrible ball. You know, maybe it's a little bit behind him. Maybe. Probably. That's just a better cornerback play. If guys are going to break like that, you've got to be willing to go double moves immediately. I mean, it's, again, to me, that's not a terrible throw. It's not like a terrible throw is way inside. You know, that's going to be catchable. It's definitely not out in front of him. That's just a tough, tough pick, man. Damn. Pete's fired up. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. I sincerely appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me, so thank you for doing that. Again, the Quarterback School Patreon community, you know about it. Join, become a member, get even more Quarterback School content. We also have Quarterback School courses. Now, these courses are the premium content available through the channel. These are deep, deep dives on my favorite football topics, RPOs, tempos, pass protection, the best-selling course is how to beat every coverage. We even have an entire offensive system available for you over there. So hop over there and enroll in the courses. We also have a bunch of free resources available. Those resources are linked in the video description as well. Finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. Next one here. To me, this is Mesh Railroad. We're going to get the back up top on that rail. He's going to have a hot throw. He's going to try to float this thing out there and just runs out of club. You know, there's going to be a lot of things that we're going to talk through on this play because I think this is one of those plays that I would expect Gino to make. Okay. And you're going to don't freak out and say, why the hell is he going to make it with the free runner right in the A gap? What the hell are you talking about? Okay. Simmer down. Okay. Simmer down. We're going to, I'm going to hold your hand through this. This is the rail. Okay. A lot of people call this play railroad. What that is, is just a rail and mesh. Okay. So one of these two is going to run the deep hook. The other one is running the mesh. The number one down here is coming across, and that is Mesh Railroad. And I think right here, they run it with a corner down here. We don't care about the corner. Most teams would read this one, two, three, four. And that's how most teams would read it. Now, the hot, okay? This hot literally made me a backup in one period for a team when I just signed right before training camp, okay? The hot is right here or down the field, or you can bail and throw the shallow all the way across, but you're living on the edge. To me, I used to like to go right there, but if they peel to it or come downhill on it, you got to throw it down the field in man coverage. Okay, so lots, look at all the moving parts. Okay, now, now we haven't even talked about the protection yet. That's just the read. Okay, so remember the read. One, two, three, four with the hot options. Hot quick, hot down the field, hot shallow. Now, the free runner comes in the right A gap. Okay, so we're going to talk about how you would block that up. Most times, and again, I'm not speaking with certainty. I'm saying most times, most quarterbacks would want this pass protection. It's five-person pass protection, right? Got five offensive linemen. They are going to the five that you declare. Definitely going to be these four. And then what linebacker type do you want to go to? Okay, now think about it. The answer is easy right here. Why? Because you have your hots over here. The bullet or the rail. One, two. You've got the shallow coming this way as the second hot. Theoretically, you'd have these guys if they wanted to peek on hots, depending on the system you're in. But you don't want what, at the end of the day, what you don't want is it to be these four and this guy. Because then you're going to be hot off two sides, right? You're going to be hot here. You could be hot here. You're going to be hot here. It's really hard to look both sides like that. You want to close the door on one side. So you want to say, hey, we're going here. You've got these four, and I can play the front side out. If either of these guys blitz here, I can throw the hot. So for me, the declaration is wrong. Okay, and that, and I, and again, without being in their system, without knowing, I can guess that Gino has the final say. He can change this declaration and should change this declaration. So we do not have a free runner through the A-gap. Now, I know a really good course, 
that goes into significant detail about the principles of strong pass protection in the league. In one of the early principles, I don't remember if it's the first one or whatever, you never want a free runner in the drop back game through the A or the B gaps. Let me say that again, because some people probably new to the channel. You never, ever want a free runner through the A or the B gaps in drop back game. At worst, you want these free runners to be the running outside the tackles. So when we get this player running through the A gap, to me, that's a misdeclaration. Okay, so if we declared it correctly and went to 42, and again, I'm not saying I got all the answers, y'all, but I am saying because the hots are universally to the left on this play, we should be turning to the right with the center. But you see the center turn to the left? Now we got a free runner. Now, if you're going to do it like this, you would want Lockett 16 on the right looking as he runs so you could throw the hot. But see where Gino's eyes are? They're to the left because the read is to the left. Thank you. Now we've got to throw a fadeaway with a free runner in our face, and we come up a club short. A damn. Next one here, third and six, another interception. This one's tough, man, tough. Not my favorite motion down here to the bottom. We're going to run short post with the number three, trying to get the ball to the number two. It's a hell of a play from 90. It really is. Okay, that's the first and foremost. Celebrate your boy 90 <laughs> making that pick. He tips it right here. He's the two eye on the right guard or the shade on the center. Look at that tip and catch it. <laughs> that's an awesome job. Really nice. So let's talk through this play. Easy for me to say with a clicker, but to me, we're going to call this short post. Okay, and all short post is, is it's, usually tethered to a what I'm used to calling a shallow gather. So it's going to go first, and then the short post is going to come out of it, almost like a swap release, and then replace it. Essentially, it's a slant that people just call it a short post. And you almost never throw this gather shallow. It's just supposed to pull these inside guys to create this window right here. Now, occasionally, just like right here, it will pop on you. And what I mean pop meaning that it will be a big window immediately. But because the drop, you could throw this ball easily if you caught it and just no-stepped it and threw it like a hot. But because you're taking the drop for the short post, right? We talked about what the plays, the intent is to get this short post right behind it. Well, he's taking a shuffle or a three-step drop. It's very difficult to take a shuffle or a three-step drop and still come up in time to hit this first window kind of gather thing through, through here. And that's exactly what happens right here because 90 right here drops, tips it, makes a circus catch. It's there, right? Like it's there immediately, but the intent of the play most likely is not to throw that. That's almost like, a, oh no, it's wide open. I got to put it on him. Now I took the wrong drop to do it and now it's tipped and it's a disaster. So you can see it pop right there. Boop. But because he's in a shuffle, catch shuffle, he's now late as opposed to just raising up and playing the play the way it's supposed to be played. And even if it's not a short post, say it's a choice from the number three, it really doesn't matter. You you can see the intent of the play. Swap release, cross his face, it's there. Instead, we try to force it to something that flashes, trying to make a hero play, and it their guy makes a hero play. So it's just unfortunate. It's a hell of a play from 90. That's the end of the day. But man, you just wish, you know, man, just play the play. You know, again, uh, oh, as opposed to the guy on the right, I think 19 coming right into our screen. That's a bummer. <laughs> How about the tackle from 19 right there? He goes up and over. Whoo, rough one. Next one here, third and two. This is certainly a turnover worthy play down here to the bottom slot. This is my guy Smith and Jigba doing us dirty, I think. Really rough choice or option route. You know, this is a fast way to get on the quarterback and the whole offense bad side right here when you come out and run these little option or choices and you run out of it and then stop. <laughs> not for me. Not great, Bob. So, again, what this play is, it sure looks like this is what I'm used to calling an option or a choice. So he can come out. He can sit in there. He can run in sometimes. You can do whatever you want. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this type of stem where you've already got outside leverage to where now you're going to come in here and kind of like slow him inside to just give up more to then run out and then he stops. <laughs> so once you're at the top of this thing, at the end of the day, regardless if you like that stem or not, at the top of this thing, once you turn out and run, you got to keep running, dog. The ball's in the air. 
This is the NFL. He's playing with some anticipation right there. He's trying to lead you. You can't run out and then stop. So to me, this is a turnover-worthy throw, but it's not on Geno. Look at that route. I mean, come on. He's throwing it. You're running out. He's throwing it. Now, it might not be a great decision, but it's third and two. You got to throw it somewhere. You got to win. It's a fast way to get kicked off my fantasy squad right there, 11. Come on. We got to be better than that. That's doing us dirty. That's a fast way to start not getting touches, not getting targets. Lucky. Next one here, second and 10. We're going to skunk another one to 14, this time up top on the slant. Now, you know, some of these things, it's hard to say, you know, who's more at fault, the wide receiver, the quarterback. You know, it sure looks like these are quarterback sinkers, like he's looking at his hand like an infielder who missed the ball. This is a pretty easy throw for most people in the NFL. I'm not saying it's 100%, but it's a, it's a really high percentage throw. You catch a half field safety with that weak side backer in the A gap here. I think Gino actually makes this a little bit harder than it has to be. It looks like he's like looking off here. And it's just a tick late to get his foot back. If you just caught this snap, put your foot in the ground, and threw it right out the break, like a little bit more on time, like a little earlier, I feel like it's easy. It's almost like he's increasing the level of difficulty here, thinking he's got to like make it cute and look off. And then when he comes back, he's like swinging and got a lot of moving parts, throwing sinkers. So again, you know, I don't know. Maybe the weather is terrible there. It doesn't look like it's windy. But, I mean, we're missing a number of throws that I would say normally you're expected to make at a really high level. And that is a bizarre miss. But, again, watch his eyes. Catch. He's looking to the left. Left, 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 left. Back foot. You don't have to look off in quick game like this when there's a natural hole up top. That's a big boy hole. Just raise up, flip it to him, give him a nice, easy catch. Skipping stones out there. Again, watch his helmet. You can see the lo the logo. They're sweet logos, but logo left, back foot, boom. He gets lined up, but that thing, I mean, it almost looks like it gets tipped. It comes out so funky, right? Like that thing is nose down wobbler. Damn. Just unnecessarily difficult in my opinion. Just catch, put your foot in the ground, give us a better throw. Last one here, game winning touchdown pass. A little bubble down here to the bottom. Your guy, 11 totally redeems himself <laughs> little bubble outstanding block from 14 world-class block nice job not getting the holding too that's a hell of a play now there's a lot to like about this play the little subtle detail that i like is watch the center the center is pointing out 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 they're going all the way out to the edge pressure so the center's going to the two technique the left guard is going all the way out to the five and the left tackle is going way out to a guy who's not even on the screen for zone Gino likes the numbers out there. Catch, throw, good ball, great block. And one just does not have the open field tackling to even get close. I mean, look at that. Acceleration, hell of a block. Nice job letting up right there, 14-2. Look at the motion from 14. Love it. On a block. Yes. <laughs> that is awesome. Big time play. So what is this play? I'm going to classify this as an SRO. It's really an SRPO. And what I mean by that is we have the bubble down here. So this is to the side of the run. So he just likes this. Come out. You block MDM. MDM is most dangerous man. So he's going to come out here, block him. We're going to end up leaving this player who doesn't get close to making the tackle. The actual run play is zone right here. Now, the part I talked about that I love the communication here is that the center is going to go out, 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 or whatever their call is to push this thing all the way out. So we're going to go here. Here, now these are tough blocks, tough angles, but at least everybody's blocked. You've got everything blocked up to the front side. So that's the run. So you've got the access screen. You've got the run, which is the inside zone or the zone part of it. And then the backside, this looks like a, just a go route. So if you like that, you could take that too as far as the option for the pass. So multiple pass options, vertical stretch, horizontal stretch. This is high-level football executed at a really high level. Less than a minute left, fourth quarter for the win. Well done, Gino. Well done, Seahawks. That is a nice one versus a very good defense. Just a really nice job. Again, that subtle little point. Look at the center. Communicate. I love the communication. Out, out, out. Catch, throw, strike. Make somebody miss. Accelerate. No holding. Let's go.
So that is a wrap. Geno Smith, Seahawks, very nice come from behind win there at the end. Really liked this game. It was fun to see some big plays all over the place. You know, was it consistent as far as throwing the ball? Not really. If I'm being honest, there were some missed throws. There were some really high level plays. I thought the plays where Geno created were probably my favorite plays from that. I think of him as a little bit more of a true traditional spinner, arm talented guy from the pocket. But when he can get out and create and have all those clubs in the bag as well with the touch, with the driving it down the field, all those things together, really fun to see that kind of come together. You can still see kind of just some blind spots or some gaps, whether it's the trust on the perimeter, whether it's fine tuning exactly what they're doing in their pass protection world. I think things could be even cleaner and easier. We'll see if they continue to get better. Thank you so much for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.